All right, green light market. What's the green light market, family? Just before you go, though, just to add on to what the brother just broke down just now, because that was a very interesting um, show. I hope you all enjoyed that. We were talking about, like, chirps and whatnot. Um, when I look at a woman, I look in a woman. I don't look at a woman, you follow? And vice versa, that's how it should run. So a woman should be choosing a brother on his intelligence, and a, and a brother should be choosing uh, the woman on intelligence. Not the butt, not the lips, not the accent and all that, because she may look fine as a... Uh, 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 and you take her home, you know, you take her to the bar and like, yo, what you drinking, young lady? Oh, she want a pint of milk. You're like, duh. You know what I'm saying? So you, what we got to do is we got to look within. You got to look in people. Don't look at people. You follow? We got to look in, in, in. Don't uh, be on 3D lockdown. So all the ladies them that are looking into Brooklyn New Bar right now, 07946, <laughs> double I'm joking, I'm joking. Me. <laughs> so great. All right, so guess what? Get, get, get into the, the, to the, give facts for that, you know what I'm saying, explanation right. right there, you know what I mean? To look in, you get me? All right, so what's the, what's the green light market, family? Yo, one love, family. One love, London. One love, people. Mystic ri- listeners, everybody. I saw Mike. Uh, the reason why uh, we put together the green light market was in order to help create a platform for entrepreneurship, uh, healthy live uh, for people who want to be able to uh, have a platform in order to present their products that uh, maybe that um, they want um, to be able to get it out to a large audience and maybe to let people know what they're doing and what they what um, they need to get their uh, their products, their healthy org- uh, organic products, the, the the green groceries. The, the, the pendants, the necklaces, all the stuff, all the crafts and stuff that we're making in our homes and different stuff, and we don't have a, 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 a business and where to sell our stuff, well, the market gives you that platform where you have um, an audience, you have customers, um, and you can put your stuff out there and you can start to build yourself up and build your business up. That's what the green light market's all about. And, like, what's your background? Like, was you a market trader or vendor before now? Like, why did you, you know, what was the thought behind setting this up? Well, from your perspective. Well, from my perspective, well, I, I have a shop on um, West Green Road um, called The Light Shop, um, 120 West Green Road, um, Tottenham, London, N17. Um, the reason why we did the market is because we noticed that, I mean, a lot of people come and ask us to sell their products in the shop. Like, you get a, a lot of entrepreneurs who make cr- arts, crafts, they make creams, all different type of products, and they have no way to actually get their stuff out to market. Mm. So, we decided to have a weekly market because it gives people that opportunity to be able to sell and make an income for themselves. So, my background is that of a retailer. I'm a business owner. And I would like to give other people the opportunity to become business owners so that I won't have to be the only one on the block that's, you know, representing what we stand for. So, a question now, yeah, because I, I recognize Brooklyn from you to run a shop in the in shops in Seven Sisters, yeah, before it get take over, right? Indeed, man. Um, so, um, it, I want to know because there, there's some, there's this always talk about gentrification and these kinds of things. Yep. Um, and, you know, in the, in the, in the in shops, a lot of us used to own businesses and these kinds of things, it got, it got taken over. Uh-huh. So, does that have any impact upon what you lot are doing in terms of looking at Tottenham and, and the possibility of it being gentrified and the businesses is this being owned by others? It does. Like, if I just add on to what um, my brother Mikey also just um, eloquently broke down about his background, my background is also, like, is vendoring. So, you know me, a lot of people see me in their, in their districts or their towns, you know, north or south side or east side of, of the, the Thames River, London. Yeah. So, basically, I started out on the street with my table. You know, everyone used to put out the table. Back in the day, you had a place called Fads, right? Yeah. You put out the table and we'd vendor the books. You know, I'd be out there, when people going to work in the plantation, nine to five, I'd be out there on the subway in seven sisters um from like nine in the morning and when they return back from work i'm there nine at night giving them the books back then it was the books it was vhs tapes before this digital thing before they moved from analog to digital so um and then what happened is that i saw uh an issue an opportunity to get inside the the indoor mall down there in seven sisters we was talking about so i had actually gone inside i set up a store of a young brother and we were doing like incense sticks and videotapes. Back then it was all VHS and, and um, you know, audio cassette tapes. Um, so we started off like that and books and pamphlets. So I'd regularly fly back to Brooklyn, New York, or Atlanta, bring things over that people couldn't get in this country. So that was an opportunity. That was a niche. You follow? So, and back then there was a lot of um, people of color 
inside the market, as you remember. And what happened gradually is that um, this is going to tie into the whole gentrification thing, is that the Colombians started crossing the, the Thames River because before that, they was predominantly in Elephant and Castle. Mm -hmm south of the Thames River. And then you had the other Latinos in, in Northwest London, but not like the number of Colombians you have right now. So they started coming in and offering brothers like, you know, money to, to vacate their store and whatnot. And I saw that. So I, I knew it was going because I seen that happen in, in Harlem slowly with the flea markets. I seen it happen in Fulton Street, downtown Brooklyn. I've seen it happen in Atlanta, everywhere else. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to put my foot down and just stay here. So I decorated my store. I was one of the first brothers to decorate the store because I used to do interior design for stores. So I decorated the store. gave it the whole um, brick wallpaper effect, which I actually got it from Germany. So I made it unique. And then, you know, started taking real care in my store, because presentation, right? And, um, and some of the Colombians were seeing that, and then they started copying and whatnot. By then, half of the brothers had left. Do you remember they used to have uh, tags and everybody, even yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, right yeah, next yeah, to me yeah. came in, because yeah. he was doing vendoring also. I said, yo, That's come Joe inside, come Joe. inside. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So we, we was holding it down like that. So what the management saw is that these Latinos were coming in, and... I don't want to like diss them, but you know, you know, I'm just, what the heck? Truth is truth. Their money is backed by by selling certain substance, right? We all know that. Don't need to say no more. So that's how they they unify. But the the bottom deal is that regardless how they got their money, they actually came together and unified. Mm -hmm. They they came together together and and put something down. With us now, we was there like, yo, come and support us. We got stores inside. Because the funny thing is, when you're on the street and you're vendoring, dudes be like, yo, you need a store. The minute you go and get a store, yeah, really they come inside like, oh, you're going to be here on the weekend? I'm like, yo, of course I'm going to be on the weekend. It's a store. What's up? They don't support as much, you follow? Yeah. And they don't realize, like, it takes a lot. You know, we got taxes to pay, import, export, bills, yeah, rates, yeah, yeah. all of that. You heard me? So... So basically, to cut a long story short, yeah, they came in for their money, you know how they make their money, but they all pulled in their resources together, that's something we don't. So they came in and swept right through, right through. And it was only me and, <laughs> me and also, and uh, the barber Tony, who's still there, who was kind of holding it down. So they was kind of disrespectful to us because they kind of looked down to us as a society anyway as people of color, right? Yeah. So they used to hang out at my shop every day, used to get into arguments, cut a long story short, got into some <laughs> altercations. I had to bounce out of there real quick. I had to right. go back to the States. So, you know, and I tried to get back in there. So I had to do another store when I came back uh, uptown Edmonton Green precinct. Right. But basically, it was back to square one now. The last time I was in an indoor mall, it was owned by an Arab. The Arabs ain't got no love for us, right? We was all in there doing our thing. After coming over there, guys have left me, whatever, whatever. This guy defaulted three London boroughs, went to jail. We all lost our livelihood. Since then, I've had to go back to square one. You see me outside on the block at my table. You follow? So it was a, it was a most high sand that also Mikey came along and said, you know what? Yo, let's do this green light market thing. So I'm like, yo, I saw his vision. Right. I'm down with that. Okay. Every other community supports themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We do not. Mm -hmm. But it's funny that everyone else comes in our communities, mm -hmm. where it's meant to be coming unity, builds what they build, we go and spend it, and then they run away with the resources. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what also I put together with this green light mark is like, you know, as you said, people want to come and sell certain things in the shop. Let's give them an opportunity themselves to be entrepreneurs, because yeah. that's our background. Yeah. We've, done, we've done all that work already. That's our mm -hmm. background. Let's all go to a place where it's once a week, so it's not hard to find. Yeah. Because some, some places you hear on radios and whatnot, you know, come to this place, this and that venue. This is once a month. Yeah. The third Sunday in a month was like, <laughs> how are you going to remember all that? You, yeah, by the time yeah, you computed yeah. it, you done missed out. Yeah. Yes. You follow? So with this one, there is no mistake. It's like, you know what? Yo, we here like every, every Saturday, mm -hmm. period. Every mm -hmm. single Saturday. Yeah. Come and support it. It's, it's there for you. If you're an young entrepreneur, uh, if you're selling like fruits and veg in your garden, come on, yo, bring that down. If you're a sister, you do doing hands and nails, yo, bring that down. You got books on that, bring that down. You do poetry, you rap, whatever. Bring that down. Let's make that collective. You follow? So it's the whole thing is a teaching thing because all the vendors are each one teaching one masters. Yeah, what I love about this market is that you've mentioned it's like vendors who are creating products that they can go and sell to yeah. market and there's a lot of people that are doing that now and have that kind of entrepreneurial spirit and m me and myself, I love markets, you know. I remember growing up and always being in Dawson Market, going down to Wembley Sunday Market that has now closed down as well um, and it's nice to know that there's now something in our area that you say is consistent as well because like you say, sometimes a lot of vendors who are creating these products, they have to wait till there's a special event going on right. so they can sell but right. now there's like an, a place where they can actually be consistent with it and actually start to build up a consumer base as well i'm glad you said that because a lot of these venues and i used to go to them to them regular wherever it was any time there was an event going on i would go there take my bags uh, and i'd be there right but a lot of them now they're not really catering for the average vendor 
for instance, you go somewhere and, you know, vendors work with the, the minimum, a six, a six foot by four foot table, right? So you go into these venues and they could be in an academy or schools, they call them, whatever they call them right now. You go there, you, you work with a little elementary school table. You can't, you can't work like that, you follow? So there's not provisions laid out. With the green light market, where we stand out is that we know that because that's our background. So we know the provisions are there. So we know when you come, boom, minimum you're gonna get is a six foot by four table, right? If you need double, we make that 12 foot. You can square it off, do it long ways, whatever you want. But that space is right there. With these other ven venues, it's not putting them down. Is they're not thinking with the, the vendors in mind. And vendors go, come on, yo, vendors goes back to day, did up. Before prostitution, they're saying that's the oldest thing or whatever. No. Vendors is going way back to when we used to barter on the motherland, you heard me? So it's always in us. But the good thing about vendors, as I said, like each one teach one, we're teachers also, is that people come and learn. We show you how to save money in your pocket. You, I remember Wembley Market was five and I used to be there every week. You follow? Yes. And then Vauxhall and all these other places. I remember Hackney Market when that was five and that was crazy. But um, the, the thing is, we're teaching people, like, for instance, I, I specialize with DVDs, Black History, Urban, urban Cultural Sciences, and um, Self-Healing Holistic Health. So basically from the minute a family has come to my table, I'm saving them money. Because I'm showing them, like, you're not getting real food in these big superstars that you think is food. Go ahead, son. <laughs> okay, you know, I hug the mic like that. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> now, the green light market is, like, every Saturday at Tottenham Chances, which is, like, 399 High Road, Tottenham, London, N17, 6QN. Right by Seven Sisters Station, pretty much, isn't it? Right. Like, if you're just coming from far, you could literally go to Seven Sisters and it's just... Literally, yeah, it's literally. it's on the high road. Opposite the, the police station, because I know nothing. No, no, it's not opposite, man. The police station further down. Yeah. <laughs> but it's about five... <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's opposite the Mahat yeah, Centre. Which, which, which is next to the police station. Where are you leaving? We know where I'm talking about. Where are you bringing hey. police into this for? <laughs> no, no, uh, because... What they, police have to do with this? No, Shaka is assuming that more of our listeners may be more familiar with the police station. <laughs> All right. I would, I would I'd rather say it's next door to the old library. All right, cool. But it's all good, though, because um, the location is very accessible, yes, as you is. know, because it's easy to get to police station. So it's just up the road from the police station, literally. So if you get to the police station from the train station, you've passed it. We're on the left where the big car park is. You can't actually miss it. It has a no. big sign that says T chances. It says, so, yeah, it says yeah. T chances. We've got stalls out front. We have uh, all kind of different vendors. So like I said before, it starts at 11 in the morning. Um, it finishes at 7 in the evening. But there's also another side to the green light market because it's not just about, you know, entrepreneurship and uh, selling products and making money. It's also about artist artistry or artist being an artist. Mm, I mean, you know? creative. Um, because we have our green light music session that runs parallel at the same time as the market's running so while the market's there and you can walk around and you can buy your products and you can support your local business and you can support your community you can also come down and you can be entertained with live music we have live musicians playing we have live singers like on the uh the 18th of this month the 18th and the 25th of this month we got dahlia the poet from detroit michigan coming live to perform along with carol cabby from here in the uk who's um singing jazz um Dahlia is doing a little bit of uh, dub poetry with some rapping and uh, she's a community person in the States. Uh, she's got a big following out there. So we invited her over here to show her a little bit of what we're doing so that we can make that uh, international link and contact with some of our brothers abroad and some of our sisters abroad as well. Um, so it's almost like you don't necessarily have to want to go to the market to even buy. You could just want to go down there, get a bit of education, speak to the vendors and just enjoy yourself, you yeah, know? Almost and, bring the family and, and down. We, we've got a big Big vegan restaurant on the venue, right? Where you can but get all the vegan food you want. We got um, all kind of things: uh, eat green, healthy, natural food, cooked fresh on the premises. Um, so and fresh juices, fresh drinks, and I, I, I gotta um, let you know that we got that Gobi Green teas, teas down there as well which is like is a hot product right now Jamaican product um, Gobi green tea it's moringa sour sap teas they've, they've got um, neem search my heart teas they got a dumpy gun yeah. search my heart is good for your heart obviously <laughs> right it's really good for your heart if you get them little heart pout, um, murmurs and um, you're, you're a bit um, you're weak hearted 
it's something that really strengthens your heart. That's something that they've been giving us from since we was young. Okay. Still, we know we know the power of it, As and we, we have it. And it's called Gobi Green Tea Bags, mm -hmm. and we have that exclusive product down there as well. Um, there's so much that we do down there that we have to try hard to cover everything, right? So if any of our listeners are interested in having a store right now, is the availability yeah. there and what would they need to do? Yeah, well, if point? they're interested in a store, they could phone the number, uh, call us all on 07-960-142-2. One nine one, or you could call Brooklyn on zero seven nine three zero two six two one two four. Um, that, could, that, that's Brooklyn the person, not, 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 not the place. King no, King you don't King have there, to phone Brooklyn, no, New no, York. Brooklyn no, the man, we're in the studio. Yeah, not unless you got WhatsApp, but it's all good. Yeah, you know, <laughs> but um, yeah, you could phone even one of us too for stoves. We have stoves available. Um, we don't have a lot of space left, so I mean, if people want spaces, they got to make sure that they move fast and move quick because spaces. Um, some people only come like every two weeks. Some people come weekly. Um, we got some two-week slots available. We've got a few one-week slots available. We've got the double tables. We've got a few single tables. The market is outdoors, like uh, when it's summertime and it's nice out. We're, we're out in the front. We've got the whole parking lot. We've got inside the building as well. But when the weather is not too good, we also go inside the building where the big stage is so that we're covered up. We're nice and warm. Nobody, Your products ain't going to get wet and get destroyed. You don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. We're providing tables as well. And um, it's growing very fast. We just want more support, and we want people to, to know out there what we're doing so that they can come and help and support us and support themselves so they don't have to be relying on other people for your income and for your support, that you can do something for yourself, like Marcus Garvey said, and we're initiating that. Definitely, and we speak on this show a lot about group economics, so this is definitely an opportunity where we can go out as a community and support local vendors who are creating these products for us, for our health, and our well-being as well and um, as we mentioned earlier the fact that it's weekly as well means that you can't forget when it's on it's on a saturday you know Every from saturday. morning to evening and i feel like the great thing about it which makes your you know your setup really um unique is the fact that you're providing live entertainment which is something you don't usually get at a market and also um we can appreciate the fact that you have it indoors and out so as you say you know we, we were talking about the weather earlier if it is a rainy day you know you can still go down to the market because there will be you know it will be indoors That's right. That's right, sis. can i just throw something out there right. if i just say these words right i want to see if it resonates with anybody in the studio or any of the guests listening if i just say something like greenwood um, Archer and Pine. Anybody here? Does that resonate with you? Greenwood, Archer and Pine? Yeah. I'll give it away. If I stick got the word it. Avenue on the end, then you got it. But yeah. Okay, so Greenwood, Avenue, uh, Greenwood, Archer and Pine. Go on, go on. Avenue. Go on. So now you go. I think so. Greenwood, go on, go on, go on, talk, go on. Okay, so 1920. Yeah, I was going to say. So All you're right, talking about the, the, like, um, like um, Tulsa, Oklahoma and yeah. them places there. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Right, so 1920, right? We got to realize how unique we are as a people, yo, people of color. Listen, my peoples. 1920, man, 1920. You had like prohibition. You had all kind of crazy things going on, right? But in 1920, it took seven months for the black dollar to leave the black community. That's when we had common unity and a community. Seven months. We had airfield, planes, libraries, schools, shops, grocery stores, theater, movie houses. Company, we had everything. You follow? Everything all in one. Seven months for the black daughter to lead the black community. Tell them how long what, what, now. what year we in right now? We in 2016? Mm -hmm. It takes seven seconds for the almighty pound and a dollar to leave your pockets. Why is that? You're running on the subway train going down to Nike World for what? For what? You follow? I could probably wear some cowboy boots and outrun any of you suckers <laughs> wearing your $200 pair of Nike Air Maxes or whatever, whatever, right? But check this out, though. Look in our so-called neighborhoods, right? Well, not even neighborhoods because the neighbors are done left. So look in our hoods, right? The, um, in our, in our so-called communities, the Asians and the Koreans and everybody have set up, right? And the Arabs have set up their hair stores, right? And they're, they're, they're taking all of your money and running away with it. They never got no love for you. They would never, ever, ever will have any love for you. I'm strategically located outside of a hair store on purpose. And the amount of people who come right past my table, ignore the DVDs, ignore the books, ignore the knowledge, and run the... You all know about Dr. Claude Anderson? <laughs> I was saying, so can people get hair products at the, at the Greenlight Market then? Their hair products at the Greenlight Market. They can get natural, natural products for their hair. 
Right? So Natural what? Queen. Why is no one catering for the weaved sister? What's wrong with you check, people? Check this out, right? <laughs> is that if we if we go if we go if we take it back to basics? No, first of all, yo, tell them, I'm asking a question. No, no, hold no, on, hold on, no, no, yeah. no. Tell them that Pax caters for the weave head sisters. Right. They got Pax. But that's what they get in the money because we're not catering. But this, is the, this, this is the problem right now because I know something's and that. Pax, and Pax is an abbreviation of what, right? Pakistanians. Yes. So that's just another. No, but I'm saying, all right, let me, let me, let me, let me tell you what, let me, tell, right. let me tell you what my weave head friends say to me, yeah? yeah he said, you know what, family, yeah? All right. We know, they, they know that we, like, these markets, they deal with natural hair and whatever, like that, yeah. but I still wear my weave. Yeah. What if I want to buy my weave from black people? Why is it you black people can I, can I, no, that no, don't want to sell me my weave? What's wrong with you people? I got this, son. I yeah. got this, right? <laughs> I'm just going to speak of a local area of where we at, right? Yes. Seven Sisters, North London, N15. Don't get it twisted. Right. You've got back-to-back hair stores, right? I done already told you. You yeah. find your boy Brooklyn located strategically outside of a hair store where they're going in and wasting all their millions and millions millions of pounds. Yes. However, just around the corner on West Green Road, there's an African sister. She's been there since day duck. Yes. She had a hair store for any of these people came in the community, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right opposite, you got Queen's hair. Yes, yes, yes. Right? With the Asian man. And then stuff. there's Pack as well. Yeah, as they well. started with one little yes. storefront. And they, got, they made so much money in a month. Guess what? They bought the store next door and they bought the store next door to that. But anyway, I ain't here. Right, can, 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 can I just substantiate what you're saying oh, just there, yeah? Because I remember oh, yeah. my, 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 dad some, my dad told me a story one time. Him and my uncle was, was parked right outside that store. <laughs> and so this has a thing. They, they decided to count the, the amount of people that went into each store. Yeah. Right? And they were saying for every 10 persons that went into that one, one went into the, the, the sister's Ooh. store. Like, for the half an hour that they were just sat out there, really? um, you know what I'm saying, doing the thing. So, yeah, I, I, I can substantiate what you're saying by just that example. But when it came to yeah. the excuses of yeah. like, one second, when, when it came to the, let me just read, finish up. When, when, it, when it came to the excuses, right, is that I had sister coming up to me saying, yeah, but the sister charges too much. So I was like, wow, it's down to that right now? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you know, you ain't supporting your own. Yeah, yeah. And then you got the chemicals that go in there because you got, hold on, you got, <laughs> all right, you know what, I'm being rushed off. <laughs> take, take rush mic, him take off, man, mic. rush him off. <laughs> Yo, one love, man, one love. Hear this now, right? Yeah. I got to say this. If you don't want your hair to be natural, you don't want to have a natural look, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Listen, if you want to buy weave and these type of things, that's okay. As long as you're manufacturing the weaves, <laughs> as long as you're making your own weaves, as long as you're making and producing these products. It's not about where you're buying your products from and this, that. It's about manufacturing these things. Why can't you make your own hair products? I mean, back in ancient Kemet, sisters used to cut their hair, make wigs out of their hair, and sell the wigs. And also used to wear wigs uh, with their own hair. Right? So sometimes when you cut your hair, you just throw it away, you sweep it and throw it in the trash. But in the old times, we never used to waste nothing. Mm. What we would do would recycle that and make that into something useful. Mm. Right? So brothers go to barbershops all the time. Mm. You could use that here and there and make something out of that. But we're not being creative. So Barbara man, them send your hair go out the green light yeah, market. What I'm to you. For it to right. with, you know, clean up and them something there. You know what I'm saying? So they like that, that Chris Rock documentary, yeah, where he took the, he tried to take the black hair and to the shop. And nobody never wanted it. Take it to the green light market, Zane. And they will try to do something with it. Because we love our people so much. We'll take everything. Anything what them have, mm -hmm. anything what them have naturally, we we'll love it. We'll take it. <laughs> Who don't want it uh, for them business? We will take it. Because we love our people. We right? are so short on time, but this is not the first time. You're going to be back many, many times now. So we're going to continue these conversations on the show. But just to clarify what we've been talking about in the last half hour, we're really asking about, you know, green, telling you about Greenlight Market. Come down weekly on a Saturday support it. I'm going to give the final words to the founders who are in the studio to tell you, you know, why you should be there rather than coming from me. Well, as y'all can tell by the energy flowing up in the studio, is that we all got so much to say, but so little time to say it. <laughs> However, this Saturday, right? Get it down, people. Write this down. <laughs> this coming Saturday at 399 The High Road, London, N17, 6QN. Now, you can either come up the subway at um, Seven Sisters, which caters for the Victoria Line subway train and the Overground, or you can come up for Bruce Grove. We're directly in between. We are near the police department, police station, whatever you want to call it. We are next to the old Tottenham Library. How, anyway, what I'm saying is that you can get information on everything. Raw diet, Dr. Sabi, Layla Africa. You want metaphysics, I, I specialize in that. You want UFOs, you want to talk about green beans, I would do that. You want black children's animation, I do that. Anything you can get in this country, I do that. I also do that every day um, at Seven Sisters Station. 
Nation. And on, those of you on Facebook, just type in The Home Tree Stem. Have a look right now, you'll see me. Um, the Home Tree Stem, right? And what else was I going to say? Oh, just to finish off on the hair thing, like for, for instance, right? Like one of the DVDs, one of the thousands of DVDs I have on my table every day is called Good Hair. Now, a lot of you saw Good Hair, right? We had this conversation before. Now, a lot of sisters, what it is is that um, Good Hair, when it first came out, that's my boy Chris, it went over their heads. And I'm like, yo, didn't you check out the factory? Didn't you check out this? Didn't you check out that? Like, you know, the chemical? Yeah, what, the straightener? I'm like, no, no, no. Call it by its, its government name, Sodium Hydroxide, which is an industrial plant pesticide. Now, what happened is that your brain is a muscle. So that's going to go into your follicles, go into your brain, which is still a muscle and an organ, right? It's going to get trapped in your vessels, go through your arteries. It's going to uh, secrete itself down and lay itself in your, in your pancreas, um, in your pancreas, uh, your pancreas ducts, right? And that's going to contribute to things like fibroids. Not just that. Also, for those of you who are still eating all that dairy, which is secreted from a female or of an animal, that's going to contribute to your fibroids. You follow? I'm not attacking all you flesh eaters, cannibals, whatever, whatever. But if you want to know more on a, on a perfect diet that calibrates to our bodies, because we are different people of color as light beings, we're not meant to be eating these dense food and they're poisonous food of foods. You come and holler at your boy at Brooklyn, 07930262124, Home Tree Stamp. And on their site, on Mystic's site. Yeah, we've got 10 seconds, you know, Kings and Kings. Right, 10 seconds. No, 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 we've got, we've got, we've got to close the show. So we're gonna, we're, we're, you're going to be back, yeah? So, words and rhythms, Mystic Radio. Mystic Live. Radio. Live. Mystic Radio. Mystic Radio. Mystic Radio. Coast to Coast Live Interaction Events Association with Hashtag Team Memzy Thursday the 2nd of June 2016 At the Proud Camden If you was at the last one It was absolutely rap, rap, rap. Thursday the 2nd of June 2016 Association with a big one Coast to Coast Live Hashtag Team Memzy is back At the Proud Camden At the Stables Market Chalk Farm London NW1 8AH Doors open at 8pm until very, very late. DJs and acts on the night showcase.